Okay, welcome everybody uh, to our monthly hurricane seminar. Uh, Zach, do you think it's okay for me to go ahead and get started? Yeah, sure, of course. Go ahead. Okay, great. Uh, so today we have a joint seminar uh, hosted by the Developmental Test Bed Center and DMC. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you our speaker today, who is Dr. Shawu Bao. Uh, Dr. Shawu Bao is an associate professor in the Department of Coastal and Marine Systems Science at Coastal Carolina University in Conway, South Carolina. He received his PhD degree in atmospheric science from North Carolina State University. Before he joined Coastal, he spent five years at DTC where he helped develop and test the h -Wharf model. His current research interests revolve around the use of air-sea coupled modeling and remote sensing data to study severe weather events such as hurricanes and their effects on coastal communities like storm surge and flooding. Uh, so whenever you're ready, Shawu, please go ahead and begin and thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Evan. And thank you everyone for joining. So let me share my screen. So can everyone see my screen and the PowerPoint? We can see it. It's not quite in full screen mode, but if uh, you prefer to present it this way. Okay, I let think me try the slide show. <clears throat> How about now? OK, yes, now it looks good. Um, <laughs> we, we do see this text on the bottom. Subtitles aren't currently showing. I, I don't know if there's a way for you to remove that, Shawu. I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I mean, do you see this thing, neat.google.com is sharing your screen? If if you do, you can click hide. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that's better. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so today I want to talk about using the ghost R images to evaluate the HAPS model's vortex structure focus. And this is a DTC visitors project. So the, okay. A little bit of the objective and the motivation. So we all know the h wolf is the operational hurricane focus model since 2007 and it's based on WOLF. And the, the HAFS is a new hurricane focus model, and it's based on the FV3 core, and it's a part of the UFS unified uh, focus new system R2O effort. So, and it will be the next generation hurricane focus model. So in this year's summer, uh, EMC has conducted some seasonal half test. And the objective of this study is to use the ghost R satellite image to evaluate the, those testing results to see how the half model focus the vortex match the observation. And uh, if there are any systematic bias and how did it compare with h -Wolf. So I will start with the data. <clears throat> so we selected three hurricanes, Doreen in 2019, and Laura 2020, and Tidy 2020. All the three uh, cases were tested in the summer's EMC seasonal test. And the seasonal test is called half version 0 0.3 final. 
And the uh, observational data we use the goes R channel 13. So that's uh, infrared brightness temperature data. So we developed uh, some software to generate the model synthetic goes R image from the model output. So the half testing is done by EMC and uh, uh, they use the OPP to generate the post process the model product. But at that time, the model synthetic satellite image was not generated. And uh, then the half model output was deleted. So it's no longer possible to run OPP to produce the model synthetic images. So what we did is we uh, developed this script to read the atmospheric profiles, okay, the pressure, temperature, humidity, O3, cloud, ice, snow, rain, purple, and the surface temperature, and some fixed data, like the land type, vegetation, and the sensor angles. So we read all this information from the UPP post the process, the model output, and then run through the CRTM library to version 2.3 to generate a model synthetic uh, images. The example is here. So the idea is pretty simple. We just uh, generate a lot of the model synthetic satellite images and compare with the actual observed images. So the, the result, I will first show some individual vortex images of the observation and the model as some example. Then I will focus on comparing the composite vortex images between halves and the, and the observation. And also we include some HWF results. And then I will show some initial condition comparison because this, uh, there seems to be an interest uh, from EMC to see the initial conditions images and how it compare with the observation. And uh, in addition to vortex images, we also will look at the synoptic scale images. And lastly, we'll show some result from an earlier experiment to run halves with HWF physics and the GFS physics suites. So we'll start with these individual vortex images. Here is an example. This is a Doreen 2019. Uh, you see four panels. Uh, they are all at the same valid time. It's just the, uh, the first panel is observation valid at this time, September 4 at the hour 6. And the other are models. They are all at the same valid time, but they are initialized at different times. So this is a initialized 24 hours earlier. So this is a 24-hour forecast. And this is a 48-hour forecast. This is a 72-hour forecast. So if you look at these images, you'll see, well, they seem to match pretty well. And <clears throat> there are a lot of random differences, of course. If you look at this uh, uh, PDF, the probability density function, well, you see this. Uh, overall, they seem to agree well, but there are a lot of variabilities. So it's it's very difficult to draw uh, systematic conclusions from these individual images, except that we can say, well, they overall, they seem to be similar, uh, the model and the observation. And there's the one thing it seems to be consistent. So if you look closely about this brightness temperature, these patterns, there seems to be a range of the brightness temperature seems to be the hydrometers. Hydrometers. 
So in the observation, the hydromedia seems to be spreading, spreading more than the models. If you look at this hydromedia, this, this, and this. So that's an example of the Hurricane Doreen. Again, overall, they seem to match, but uh, it's hard to say because there are a lot of variabilities, random differences. And this is a hurricane uh, tidy, it's a 20L. Again, you see this is a, again, they are all at the same valley time with different forecast lead times. So again, they seem to match well. Again, there's a lot of variability here. But if you look at the hydromedia, it seems to be the same pattern in the observation. The hydromedia, the ring band, ring band seem to be, be spreading more than in the in the models. And this is the hurricane Laura. 13L, 2020. Again, the same thing. So uh, overall, I, I think these images show the decent forecast. Most bridging of hydromedias, if you see these hydromedias and compare with the model. And the larger variability make it hard to see systematic bias. So what we did next is Instead of going over, because there are hundreds and thousands of these kind of images, so it's impossible to compare everyone individually. So what we did is we uh, created some composite images. By composite, I mean we overlay uh, many vortex images and get the average. So we hope that the, <clears throat> the random differences will cancel off and uh, we can see some systematic patterns. Here is an example. So this is a Hurricane Doreen. So it includes all the forecasts from August 24 to September 9. So this is a, a average observation and the average of model made from 44 forecast snapshots, all with a forecast lead of uh, 48 hours. So you can see these composite images make it easier to identify the systematic patterns you look at this two, the observation and the model. First, they will see, if you look at the outer outline, you see this observation seems to be this 280K temperature contour seems to be a little bit larger than the one in the model. I think that's maybe because the more spreading of the hydromedias, and when we average them, put them all together, they show this difference. Another difference is, you see the inner core, inner core area around the hurricane eye. So this is a 230K contour, and this is a 220K contour. And in the model, this is a 230K, and this is 220K. So we can see the observation has a much larger uh, 220K contour, the cold brightness temperature than the model. So indicating that there seems to be a warm bias in the model. And this also is evident from this scatter plot. By the way, the scatter plot uh, we use the, all the pixel, all the pixel values to make this scatter plot. Here, this axis is observation, and this is the model. So you can see on the low temperature end, we can see 
For example, the observation 220K, but the, here in the model, it's, uh, it's anywhere between 220 and 240. So obviously, overall, we can see there's a warm bias in the model. And also, this is in the PDF. Again, this is probability density function. This is a temperature, and this is a percentage. So if you look at this code end here, obviously the observation has a larger uh, fraction on this here than the observation. The brown is observation, and this blue is the model. Okay. So that tells us some systematic uh, pattern of bias. Uh, so this includes all the dates. All the stages. So next, we divided the lifespan of the hurricane into uh, three stages: so the early stage, and the mature stage, and the decay stage. So we look at them separately. So this is the same hurricane Dorian, the early stage. By early stage, we mean it's before it intensified into a wild structure, the strong hurricane. So this is from August 24 to August the 30th. So it's a 12 snapshots. And also with the lead time of 48 hours. We can see the model. Here's the model, here's the observation. So it seems the model the outer range is uh, also a little bit slower, I mean, smaller here, smaller. And overall, it had a warm bias, but uh, the warm bias is not, didn't exist for the inner core error at the early stage. Okay, early stage, we don't see a evident uh, warm bias for the model. But if we look at the strong, the mature stage, so this is uh, pretty similar to the, the first the overall, the old stage, Figures. And we can see the outer 280k contour is a little bit smaller, smaller, and uh, the warm bias in the inner core areas is very evident. Okay. <clears throat> this is a 220k contour, and here it seems to be missing. It only has a 230k contour. And no, I think I'm wrong. So the two, 220K is here, and inside it, there is a 210K contour, which is missing in this model. And also it's evident in the scatter plot here, see the, all the points are pushed towards the model side. So this is a warm bias, and also the here, the PDF here, the PDF, show this warm bias. But overall, I, I would say, if you look at the PDF, I would say the model has a pretty well agreement with uh, this observation. So that's the mature stage of the vortex comparison. <clears throat> so we com for the mature stage, we compare the, the uh, observation, here is the observation, the half model vortex, and this is the H wolf vortex. And the H wolf result is from the uh, 2019 operational real time forecast archive. The version is 2019 operational H wolf. And the half is uh, the testing, the same testing I have been sh showing you. 2021. 20, uh, and the, the H-wolf vortex, the output is on a nine, 9 degree by 9 degree smaller domain. So the, the figures I have been showing you, they are on a 10 by 10. So these are on 10 by 10, but uh, the H-wolf is on 9 by, one, 9 by 9 degree. So we reduce the, the size, domain size for observation and 
halves. So we are comparing the same thing. So comparing these three measures, you will see, well, it seems the observation and the halves model uh, have a much better agreement than H of with observation. First, they will see the observation and the halves model. If you look at this 280 K counter, there are some uh, irregular shapes here. And both in observation and the model, half the model. But if you look at the H-Wolf, somehow the outer outer line here is very smooth and very clean cut. So we don't see all these small perturbations here. Secondly, you'll see a difference is if you look at the inner core area, the inner core is in H-Wolf is much larger than both the observation and the halves. So in this PDF, the PDF here, the, uh, the brown is observation, the blue is the halves, and the green is the h wolf. You will see, if you compare the observation and the halves, so they seem to agree pretty well again, but the h wolf is a, it's a different story. You see, it's a big spike on the cold temperature end, uh, showing it have the very large cold temperature coverage here. And also the the 280K counter, the outer core counter, it seems the H wolf in this example is much smaller than observation and the halves. So it has a very high uh, percentage in the very warm temperature, like around the 290 and 300K, these red colors. So I would say uh, from this composite vortex, and they are made from uh, 23 focused snapshots. So I would say, the observation and the halves <clears throat> match the much uh, match the much better than the, the H wolf. And uh, and in this in this figure, we only use the, the lead time of forty eight hours, so we can compare with the observation. And we also look at the. Uh, composite images from halves and h wolf with all the focus leads. So 24 hour, 48 hour, 72, 96, 12, all the focus leads. So there are a lot of focus. So obviously the, there are a lot of smoothing. So you can see this very smooth pattern, but uh, the pattern between halves and the H wolf is also very clear, similar to this, similar to this and this, you can see a similar pattern. And the halves model is larger than H wolf, but the inner core, the H wolf is much larger than halves. So you can see this difference in the PDF, the PDF. So we looked at the uh, early stage and the mature stage. And also we look at the, <clears throat> the decay stage. So decay stage is after the hurricane uh, lost its vortex shape. So in this case, during 2019, the decay stage, we looked at nine focused times. So here you see, uh, there's no vortex structure, obviously, uh, but there is a difference. You see, the model in the decay stage, the model seems to have a much colder brightness temperature uh, than the observation. 
be indicating that the, at the decay stage, the half of the model seems to have a, a lot of a more higher cloud than, than the observation. So this is also evident in the scatter plot. Here you see the this scatter plot, and here the uh, blue color is the model. So you can see here the, at the code end, the model is much more than the observation. <clears throat> okay, so that's one one hurricane. So we did the the similar. Oh yeah, this is a. So we see from the satellite images, we see the model seems to be a little bit smaller and a little bit warmer in the inner core. And we know the brightness temperature is, has a relationship between the hurricane intensity because uh, a colder temperature indicates higher cloud and that may be a stronger convection and a stronger hurricane intensity. So the warmer temperature bias we saw for half the model may indicate that it has a, a weaker intensity. Okay. So to confirm this, we also looked at the, the tracks. So there's no satellite images in this slide. So we just uh, um, compare the best track and the model generated the track and the intensity. And we used the, the MET TC uh, model evaluation model evaluation tool TC to generate uh, this uh, intensity comparison and this size comparison. And by the size, we use the 64 knot wind radius. So we can see uh, the blue is the model. Okay, so and the brown is the S track. So clearly we can see the model indeed uh, had a weaker intensity bias. And similarly for the size, you can see the model, the blue is uh, generally is smaller than the best track 64 knot wind radius. So uh, this shows the satellite images identify the bias is consistent with the uh, verification by the tracks. Okay, so that's for Hurricane Doreen, and we did the similar things for the other two cases. And this is, a, I, I guess we'll just quickly go over this because the conclusions are similar. So this is a Hurricane Tidy, 20 L, 2020. This is overall, so all stages. So clearly we can see the bias. We don't see the outer 280 contour line because this vortex seems to be larger than 10 degree by 10 degree. But uh, you can see this uh, 260 contour line. The model is smaller and in the inner core area, the model has a warm bias too here. So we have 230 counter lines in the model, but in the observation we have inside it, we have the 220 counter lines. And you can see this, uh, obviously this is a big uh, warm bias for the model here in the scatter plot. And here you can see it too. So that's the old stage for the vortex. And this early stage, but we only have three focus snapshots for the early stage of these observations. So it may not say much. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, in the early stage from these three focus, the model is colder, has a larger cold temperature than the observation. But uh, to look at the mature stage, see. again, we have a 
uh, smaller 280K, and uh, we have a warmer bias in the inner core. So it's all pretty evident in the scatter plot and the PDF plot. Okay. And this again, this is a, for the mature stage of uh, hurricane tidy. So we also compared the observation, the half model and the H wolf. And the H wolf is the operational version H wolf for operational for 2020 the operational version at that time. So uh, I think we can see the similar pattern. So the half the model has a slightly smaller size than the observation and uh, uh, slightly warmer than the observation in the inner core. But the, the H of you see, it's again, the the inner core that has a very large cold temperature area. And you can see from the PDF, this big spike here, big spike. And the observation, the blue, has a, the model is, is warmer than the observation, but the H wolf is much, much uh, larger in this area than the observation. This is similar to what we saw for the Hurricane Doreen. <clears throat> okay, so this is the decay stage for Tidy. Again, we can see, well, we don't have a, a well-structured vortex, but uh, again, the model, <clears throat> the model has a, overall, it has a, colder temperature bias than the observation. You can see this uh, in the scatter plot and the PDF. The PDF is the blue line is the model. Okay, so that's the Hurricane Tidy. This is the Hurricane Laura, 13L. Uh, you can see yeah, this is all stage. So this is a 21 focused snapshots with a lead time of 48 hours. Again, we saw the same pattern here. The observation, the model is smaller and the in, inside, inner core is warmer. So we can see this from the scatter plot and the, the PDF and the here in the observation, there is a 210K code contour, which is missing in the model. <clears throat> so this is the early stage. I guess we saw the same thing here. Okay, smaller and uh, weak, uh, warmer in the core, in the scatter plot and the PDF. And this is a mature stage. We have seven focus time shots, so it seems to be uh, pretty few. Uh, but uh, we can see the hurricane, the half model result is smaller, but uh, the inner core is different from the other two hurricanes. So the inner core of the model actually is, is larger and colder than the observation in this example. You can see from the, the scatter plot at cold temperature in, you can clearly see the model uh, has a cold bias. So I don't know why, but maybe because there are only seven focus snapshots, it's not, uh, not enough to show the systematic warm bias. But anyway, uh, this seems to be a exception in the mature stage. Okay, for the mature stage, we also compared with observation halves and H-wolf. 
So this observation, the same thing you we saw from the last slide. And the H wolf, again, we saw this big, big uh, spike in the PDF showing well, in the inner core area, the H wolf seems to be so big, so cold. So I'll say from these three storms, comparing halves and H wolf and the observation, we, I think the, uh, the halves model seems to have a improvement in how realistic it uh, uh, simulates or forecasts the hurricane vortex structure compared with h -Wolf. <coughs> So this is the decay stage. Again, we saw on the decay stage, the model has a code bias, but here we only have two forecast snapshots with observations. So this may not say much. So that's all the vortex, vortex comparison. Okay. So we compare the three hurricanes uh, with half the model and the H over model and observation. So EMC uh, colleagues asked the, about the initial conditions. So they're interested in looking at the initial times vortex, how they compare with observation. So here I'm only showing halves. I'm not comparing the initial condition with uh, from h wolf because we didn't have that. Uh, <clears throat> this is Hurricane Doreen, O stage, uh, but this is the time zeros output, so the initial time. So we can see actually the initial time, the initial condition are pretty good. So they uh, agree with the uh, observation pretty well. Again, they they have the warm bias. Okay, so we have the inner core area. The initial condition seems to be warmer than the observation. And here, so you see in the scatter plot. But overall, I think the initial conditions are quite realistic. And if you compare the PDF, overall, they match pretty well, pretty well. And this is the Hurricane Doreen. And we have the Hurricane Laura initial time. Again, we, have, we saw the same pattern of a smaller vortex and a warmer, warm bias, OK? and the mature stage. And we also have the tidies, initial conditions, the initial conditions, okay? <clears throat> also, there is an uh, interest to see the synoptic scale because we have been showing the vortex scale. Now we see the synoptic scale. And of course, for synoptic, synoptic scale, it's, we cannot compare the pixel to pixel because that's too, it's not fair. So we look at the PDF. <coughs> Here we see the 20L, 30, 13L, Laura, this is a tidy, this is a Doreen. So if you look at the <coughs> PDF, and this is a cumulative PDF, basically it shows the same information. Uh, if you look at the PDF and the accumulated PDF, they matched very well, almost on top of each other, almost the uh, uh, same. So I would say uh, for the, besides the vortex overall, I think the half model physics uh, forecast the, the brightness temperature on a larger scale uh, pretty realistically. So lastly, I want to show the result from an earlier experiment by the, the result, was, the test was conducted in 2019. And this is done by GMTD, Global Model Test Bank. And the uh, result, the synthetic 
satellite images are produced by UPP at that time, 2019. So the experiment is we run half the model, okay, run half the model in 2019, and with each of physics suite and the GFS physics suite to see compare the difference. So we can see uh, somehow when the half the model used the H of physics suite, they produced a much larger hurricane. This is Hurricane Doreen. So it produced a much larger hurricane vertex core structure that observation. And when half the model used the, the GFS physics, it produced a smaller one, but uh, not a different as the between H of physics and observation. So. Okay, so <clears throat> some summary. So a tool has been developed to create uh, model synthetic satellite images from from GRIB2 uh, model product. So for the vortex scale, overall, I'll say the half the model and the observation agree quite well, but uh, there are some systematic bias. So the half the model produced slightly smaller vortex than, obser than the observed which is confirmed by the 64 not, uh, not wind radius. And the, the half the model has a warm bias for the brightness temperature near the eye wall. So this implies that possible uh, under prediction of convection. And this is confirmed by the wind strings verification. And somehow the, during the decay stage, the half the model had a code bias and uh, uh, compared with the observation. So the half the initial condition agree well with the observation, but uh, with a slight warm bias, which I think is understandable. Uh, on synoptic scale, the PDF of half the model very closely matched the observed. And uh, half the model produced more realistic vortex focus than h -wolf. I think we can say this is an improvement. And uh, lastly, we, when h -wolf physics weight was used in half, the model produced exceptionally large vortex. <coughs> so that's all I have. And uh, I'd like to thank the DTC visitor program and the NOAA funding grant uh, support. And we have a lot of collaborators. So, and I also understand the GCSDA for providing me with the CRTM library code. That's all I have. Thank you. And, uh,